Guys, good Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us. An absolute pleasure to connect with you guys through one of my favorite talk shows, a vision of a man with personality, with charm, Jesus. with mischief, <laughs> with negotiation <laughs> skills, and a man that just made it through about a week and change of his beautiful no, seven eights. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. His let's, beautiful let's be seven factual. eights. Two eggs. Jonas two Smith weeks. is back in town, and Keith Smith is uh, riding on cloud nine today. Um, I swear I, I do not moonlight, despite the voice, as a uh, phone sex um, worker. This is just the byproduct of using your voice constantly. Here comes a zing from Scott Morris. My, my voice is very much similar, and I do moonlight as a uh, late night sex worker. Okay, there we okay, go. So, so like let's it. remind people, like little it. ears listen to the show, please. They do. They do listen little to ears the show. Listen. I, I think we took it right to the PG line on that one, which is fine. Um, Judah Wickhauer is our director. Let's go to the three shot and welcome the fellows to the show. Keith Smith, fresh from a board meeting. I am, yeah. My actual last uh, Charlottesville associate, Area Association of Realtors. Look at that. <laughs> I got it right. I got it right at the last, was my last board meeting today. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to make next month's uh, due to uh, the health concerns I got going on and uh, having to do some stuff at um, VA Medical Center. But uh, yeah, today was the last board meeting, and it was a short one, which is always a good one. Oh, good, board, good short thing. board meetings are always good. Short board meetings are always good. As someone who runs some boards, one of my top priorities is keep them as short as humanly possible and efficient. <laughs> Follow the clock, brother. Follow the clock. Jamie Turner's watching the program. Hey, he Jamie. says, what a start to the show. I would imagine <laughs> I would imagine it's Keith Smith's tie and not Scotty Moe and I talking about being yeah. uh, phone sex No, no, let, let, so let's change this. Let's just say you've got your Barry White. Is that I just date myself to? Uh, you know, I know Again, who Barry White is. There you go. Yeah. They're a Barry White uh, sexy voice on. Uh, well, my friend, how's uh, why don't we take a moment before we talk real estate? Scotty Moe very generously bought yeah. us farm fresh eggs. Is it is it from the Farmette in Culpeper? It is, yeah. Uh, from the uh, from the the slew of uh, layer hens that I have, we got a few too many roosters uh, that need to be. Uh, I've actually got a realtor up in Reston. Um, who, Let's get them on screen, and Judah. This is like now. Uh, don't drop them, Smith. Don't drop. Don't them. screw those up. <laughs> Go ahead, like Scotty. A producing team, uh, and uh, she she's like uh, she's like I want to I'll you know I want to call one and uh, and you know pluck it and like do like I, I was like I got two. I was like I'll bring them up to Reston. You want you want I've. You want to kill some, tick, some chickens in Reston? And her husband's totally like, if she does it, she will do it. Like, I was blown away. Like, these are, like, uh, not your typical bring me a chicken to kill people. Okay. I was, I was very, uh, I was like, but at the same time, on a on a realtor to LO, like, bonding type of deal, like, oh. let's go, baby. It doesn't uh, yeah. get um, yeah. better synergy and bonding than a loan officer and a realtor murdering Getting, some chickens for right. food for their kids that's for right. that night. Let's, yeah, let's have a barbecue. Scott we're, Morris. We're doing really good. We're having sex workers and we're killing chickens. Scott <laughs> Morris, not only one of the best Dude, loan producers on, here, on the East Coast, but he's also a gentleman farmer. And ladies and gentlemen, can you peep the sweater Scotty Moe has on so today. So I didn't know. You may have to stand up to model this, Scott. I, I mean, you're looking it good. Was, it was jackets and no, pocket no. This because I came from a board meeting. That's what this is. Jackets all about. and pocket square day, and I, we thought we were getting close to Halloween. So uh, I've got uh, you know going for a little Lebowski. You know the dude. Oh yeah. Uh, well his done. dudeness, El Duderino. If you're not into the whole brevity thing, <laughs> like uh, you know, I knew where we were going. Oh, the show is on fire right now. So how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Uh, good. So uh, I'll, I will briefly touch on, I talked in a couple of weeks ago on the show. Uh, in May, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Uh, I began uh, a, a chemotherapy regimen that lasted roughly three months. Uh, I took a break from August to uh, September when I kicked off a radiation chemo combination five days a week. Uh, and last Friday was my last treatment, hopefully forever, in regards to that. Um, well done, Bill. Still heavily feeling the radiation effects. Um, but, you know, and I've got a cold on top of it, which is like 
bam, bam. Uh, but you brought us eggs. But yeah, but but I'm I'm hope you know I can I can already feel like you know my energy level is up yeah. and like knock a couple more days down and get on the other side of this thing. I'm really excited. Scott well, Morris, a good people, Vanessa Parkhill, giving you uh, some love on the feed right here. Give Scotty Mo some love. Um, the man is 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 going about this like he goes about everything in his life, with a positive outlook, a confident attitude. He uh, has a phenomenal family, loving wife, three kids. He's got chickens. He's, chickens. A, he's a gentleman's farmer. Chickens. And in September, in September, he was one of the top producers at Ross Mortgage with, uh, with the, in the loan business. And I foresee uh, November pans out the way that we look like it's going to pan out. That, that theme continues. Uh, well done, Scott. Rocking the world and rocking the cancer. Well done, sir. Thank you. Thank well you. Yeah. Thank you. So I love it. I, I wanted to kick off a little bit today because I've, I've, been, I've been asked this question for, by a couple of buyers, and maybe I'll throw it right at, at you and we can kick it off this way and see where the feed takes us on it. Um, so if you can, explain the importance of buyers doing the pre-approval, the pre-qualification process. Great question. Why is that so important? Sizzle reel this year. Partic particularly, particularly in today's market. So in any market, uh, the the importance of getting the pre-approval uh, up front and ahead of time versus the day you walk into a house and say, all right, I want it, um, depending on your situation, if you're self-employed, uh, that could take, you know, that could take another 24 hours. Um, and, and the time that when you walk into a property that this is, this is the one for you, you may not have that kind of time because while we're getting into a less competitive fee market, we're still in a situation where we've got very low inventory. So uh, when someone goes in uh, and they, you need to make an offer then and there, we still may need to collect documents from you and, uh, and to, to verify that truly what we're, we're sending out is a pre-approval, not just some pre-qual that is, what I is listed without you giving any information. And then all of a sudden we've got you shopping for a house that you maybe not, you won't qualify for. Um, the pre-approval is your, is your, tell someone that you've been vetted. Uh, it says, yes, that someone's looked at this guy's finances or gal's finances, and they're going to close on this property. Um, and, and that's what a letter from me means. Uh, I don't have, I don't have fallout due to, uh, bad work on the front end, meaning we collect all the information. Uh, we get, uh, you know, if you're self-employed, uh, we, we want everything. We want it up front so that we're sending a letter that we can be confident uh, that you're going to close the purchase on. Nicely done. That was fire right there. Very succinct. So the, so the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification is what? A pre-qualification, pre you can log online. I can get on my phone right now and, uh, in fact... In fact, because I'm petty, um, <laughs> someone sent me a, a USAA uh, Ooh, prequel. Ooh, a little shade right here. I like it. And, and I was just like, everything that he said made sense, except there were, you know, there were some exceptions. And it told me that you don't really qualify for as much as you're telling me that you qualify for. So I went on to USA and logged in, and sure enough, bang! I can generate a, a pre-approval pre of the, what that's what they call it, um, but it's really a pre-call without without giving them any documents. So, so as a buyer, that makes such a difference because, as in today's market, in this O shifting market, right? Uh, me as a listing agent, where that pre-qualification comes from, what pre-approval comes from, and 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 you know, the form of it makes a difference because what we don't want to do is get halfway through the deal and then, you know, because it was from a dot com or whatever the heck it is. Uh, or lender. even from a, you know, a, a local person who doesn't, you know, you're, you're going to know most of the time um, if you show up with this thing in hand from your realtor, the quality of work that is sitting behind it. And they're going to want you to get in touch with someone that they, even if it's not me, and for some people who are out there listening, that's okay. I want it to be me, but it doesn't have to be me. Um, you, they're going to know that 
look, the letter that you're bringing me, I've had problems with before in the past for X reason. I'd really like you to reach out to X, X, and X. And uh, what that means in, in my world uh, for realtors, if you want, if like giving three names is fine, introduce me in a group text. Be like, I'd like you to meet Scott. Um, and, and see the response time. Uh, see the way that your clients are treated. See the difference in the, diff the level of service that's provided, uh, not just from a confidence standpoint that we're going to close the loan, but the way that your clients are treated. Like, that's, an, that's also part of the process. Um, knowing that your clients are getting an experience that they wouldn't somewhere else to where when they turn around and they go, gosh, uh, Keith is amazing. Uh, hooked me up with Scott, and, and because of Keith, I got all these things. Because I'm always going to be a greater representation of you than, say, you are of me. Like, if I do something wrong, that's going to come back to you. Um, it's, it's never, but as long as we close, uh, any things that, that, any friction maybe between you and the client, that, a lot of that gets forgotten, um, knowing that I did a good job on my end, and we ask for referrals through the process in order to supply you more business as well. Man's on fire. There you go, buddy. I'm, I'm making what we're doing, or at least what I'm doing, super, super easy. Just Me to too, talk Keith. easy peasy. Easy peasy. Is that what you said? Easy or peasy. E easy peasy. So the, just as you were talking, I was just taking a look at what's on Charlottesville Active right now. I'm doing that for a reason because uh, we just put a home yesterday on 2308 Center Avenue. Um, but there's only in the Oh, city you got a listing. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, in the um, Charlottesville area, there's only 37 homes on the market. There's three. One of them is ours. Um, that's under 300,000, uh, and but you know, the, and that runs all the way up to one eight, one million eight, eight fifty. So we're not seeing seven. more days on market here yet. Uh, yes, we are. I think. Yeah, I think. I think you are. We've been talking about that uh, pretty much for the last couple of weeks. They're starting to grow. But the conversation we had with Woody and Nikki on Monday, because today's Wednesday, right? On Monday. Today's Wednesday. Was it, thank, whether it was buyer's market or not. We, uh, it, is, it is Wednesday? Today's it is Wednesday. Wednesday. You guys want to text me later to take my trash out? Today's, I forgot last week. Okay. okay. Today is Wednesday. We will let them know. Judah, we got to make sure we text All right. Scotty Mo. Take, take your trash out. Take your trash out. I think he's joking over here. Um, why don't we ask him that question? Do you think it's yeah, a seller's buyer's market? What do you, how do you characterize it right now? I think we're shifting to a buyer's market. Um, yeah. And that is especially true. Um, <clears throat> what I'm seeing in Richmond, Culpeper, um, is 500 is, big, is your sticky point. That's where I'm starting to see uh, a little more, I'm seeing more days on market. Uh, you know, if it's a, unless it's, unless it's like, the listing agent did an A plus, like, Getting the hitting the value to where they're looking for offers, not just to have it be on. Not, if they're looking to sell it, not list it, and uh, coupled with uh, it, that, seems to be the just the sticky price point. So uh, I'm just I'm, I'm looking at active Charlottesville right now. The median days on market, believe it or not, is 36. Um, the average is 54. There's a there's some that are at zero, which is one of the ones we just put on yesterday. Actually, it's at one now. Um, and then the highest, the maximum is 240 days. But you're, you're right. When you start looking at the certain price points, um, you know, they're, they're below 30. But th there's a lot of 30 days in here as I'm going, going through it. The one that we put on yesterday, um, I've already booked already all day today for showings and half of tomorrow. It's a good price point. <clears throat> well... It's a great price point, but if you read the listing, it's sold as is. It it needs help, right? It it you know it needs. It's got great location, great price. The features and condition needs a little bit of help. And if you're the buyer who likes this property and you want uh, me to get you in touch with a contractor and a HUD consultant, we will rip this thing apart and do a 203k loan and get you the home of your dreams. Well, that was the door I was opening for you. We should go down that road. Yeah. Uh, so if there is a buyer that wants to do this, that is not the investor buyer. Give us the address again. 
Uh, you're, you would have to tell. Hold on a second. I should know that. It's my own listing. Uh, 2308 Center Avenue. 2308 Center Avenue? Center Avenue. C-E-N-T-E-R Avenue. We're looking at it right now? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's sold as is. It, it needs help. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's a great opportunity for either a, a, a full fit renovation or potentially an investor. You can, it's, you can actually um, put a two-bedroom apartment downstairs and a two-bedroom apartment upstairs. It's oh, that's up a there. fantastic location. Yeah, it's a great location. Tell us about the location. Yeah, it's, it's, close to, it's close to the university. It's close to walking distance. It's right off of Cherry Avenue. I mean, it's... You know, it's, it's the location is, is perfect for it. And, you know, to your point about pricing it right, if you take a little history into the list, into the listing, and we won't talk about who, right? But at one point in time, that was on the market for $400,000, which got zero traction. And, you know, pricing it right matters. And we, I think we priced it right. And uh, by the evidence of a full day of showings, um, I think You that think this is an investor? You know, it I think this goes to my point of higher interest rates has slowed investor activity, um, which has made it easier for first-time home buyers to get in on a property um, potentially like this with a two or three k loan, yeah. or enough to to get it through the the, the main the level line. is 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 fine. It's two bedrooms. You can. You know, it, it works, but the lower level, you need some money to go ahead and, and renovate it and turn it into whatever you wish to turn it into. Will it get through a, a, a conventional appraisal oh, with yeah. the condition downstairs? So yeah. it's yeah. just it's just not nice. It's just not. It, no, it's just not renovated. See, this feels like an actual phone call that I would have with Keith. Like, yeah, yeah. It's Keep not, it going. It's great. It's, it's not... Um, you know, it's it's fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, okay. it's uh, got rough in kitchen, rough in. Actually, it's got a bath in the basement already. Okay, so, so it just needs so to get. So it's unfinished. That's exactly right. It's love unfinished. it, love it's it, love it. Okay, and so the it upstairs just needs to... is just dated. Um... Yeah, they did actually did a great job. They painted it, you know, but it's it's a two bedroom, one bath home. Okay, right, but yeah, you know, you you could renovate that bottom level. <laughs> it's a large lot. Uh, it's an like. Jerry said it's in a great location. Oh, phenomenal location. You can Amazing. walk just about anywhere. Anywhere. From it's the dead center of the city. Yeah. 2308 Center Avenue. Zip codes 22903. But the, I, I all disagree with the investor thing because most of those showings are cash investors that want to want to do it. They're not for them that financing. Yeah. Okay. People are asking me to share the link. I'll put sure. the, the uh, link in the comment section. Sure of um, my Facebook page and some of the I Love Seville Facebook pages. Um, so back to the f photography conversation we had on Monday. Those, we kept the, it real. The, 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 it's real. The, the, yeah. those, those, those photos are, you know, that's, that is what that home looks like. I mean, this right here has tremendous potential. This home finished is 2000 a month rent for an investor. That's this exactly. home finished is for a for a family, a, yeah. a young couple, even a couple with a kid sure. that wants to go through the rehab process is 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 a phenomenal start. Yeah, home. you you could you can live in it for a while and and do a full dormer on the second story. You can blow the roof off, and there's so, several houses in the neighborhood. That's what they've done. You know, just remove the roof and put a second story on on the home. So you end up with a three story, you know, basement level, main level, and upper level. But you know, it's it's the location is perfect. There there are some. Um, rentals around that kind of similar homes that taken advantage of it and renovated it. So I think we priced it right. I think it's right where it needs to be. Check the comment section. Questions coming in for Scotty Moe, Jamie Turner specifically for, for Scott. Thoughts on those 700 plus Northridge listings, Scott Morris? Um, I haven't looked at them. Uh, somebody want to... Keep so we're so we're to, we're yeah, so we're talking about the seven hundred thousand dollar Northridge. Yeah, yeah. So those are under new construction, He's, right? Yeah, they're yeah. it's new construction. I know that. Yeah, much, I, but I'd have to take a minute and take a look at that, and if somebody can chat while while we're doing. Absolutely, that. we'll call those up, viewers and listeners. If you have comments, put them in the feed. More comments coming in for uh, Scotty Mo. This is from Grayson, who routinely watches in the city of Charlottesville, and he said, "What will it take, in your opinion, Scott, for it to shift completely into a buyer's market?" Uh, inventory, inventory, inventory. Yeah. But so, but the, here's the problem: we're five years away from that being a reality, probably. And right. the market will shift back again in that time. Um, it, now it's going to be a gradual. 
So I've said, I've said on here, I in fact had a, a, a call with uh, like a, na a nationwide like top producer, runs a coaching company, uh, someone I've got you know, enough of a, a relationship with to have a call to, to where something came up uh, and they reached out to me about it. But we jumped on the conversation of, uh, of specifically that, like what makes this shift happen? Um, inventory being a living organism, like we just went through uh, this frenzy of homes being gobbled up by both investors and uh, first time buyers, you know, who could never, who had the chance to qualify in some of the uh, lowest rates that we'll ever see in, in any of our lifetimes, uh, combined with uh, your, your people going out buying Airbnb and uh, individuals becoming investors for the first time. Uh, there was just, uh, it was like... Uh, well, we I'm had a, that conversation on Monday about Airbnbs. I'm a big, I'm a big uh, fishing guy, and uh, it was uh, Marlin just rolling, rolling tuna up into a ball and attacking, and it just, that's, it, they, it's going to take some time uh, for inventory to come back, but the part of the problem is, I mean, here we go, builders who with rising rates, uh, rising costs to build are slowing down again, which is what really hamstrung us coming out of the 2008-2009. Especially we, the small builder. We have been 5 million new units a year short over 10 years. Uh, and then that's continuing. Now we've got a baby boomer generation uh, who uh, may be downsizing, may be doing different things. You've got Gen Xers who who are slowing in their uh, their their number of purchases. We've got now now we've got this huge demographic of millennials because they are children of this enormous generation of baby boomers. So now again, what do we talk about all the time? Humans versus rooftops. So. Until we come up with a solution to raising inventory, part of it's going to happen through this rise of rates, more days on market, uh, but we've really got to get new construction um, back in the game. Uh, if uh, the federal government who thinks, you know, yeah, uh, maybe they add uh, how do we build, uh, we're going to call more affordable housing, not affordable housing in its traditional sense, or just how do we get more more sticks on dirt in the ground all over the place and not you know we get cheated with these numbers like uh we talk about the crash in prices we look at what's going on in las vegas and texas and parts of the Sun Belt, where, where you get these huge new construction numbers but then again that's also where they feel the most pain when it comes to what we're going through now in the area that we live in we're not seeing the price correction that they're seeing in those areas, uh, for us, it's going to be much more stable. It's going to be, uh, it's going to happen slower. Uh, we may get some, you know, we may pull back five percent, ten percent, maybe, versus the the these big numbers that you're already seeing uh, posted in the the Las Vegas is the well because they ramped up so fast, and and usually whatever ramps up fast ramp, ramps down, um, and we're severely under inventoried. But that, we've been severely under inventory, been, we, and it's a coveted place to live. We were talking about bad, slow inventory, low inventory in 2018. Yeah, and almost I mean, to the point that we were not allowed to say the word anymore. Wait, I mean, the word uh, inventory became a four-letter word. So, Unreal. can we, talk, can we use the word out? Sure. Oh, sorry, am I, am I not supposed to be saying that? Um, you, you, Scott, you say whatever you, you can want say to whatever say. you want. Y'all don't. Uh, Northridge. We're talking about the dude. Northridge on the other side of the mountain. We're talking about the ones in Culpeper. That's why in Jamie Culpeper. brought them up to Scotty Mo. He yeah. says he thinks the 700 plus is Got a little it. high I'm, for, for I'm Culpepper. Look, I'm looking at one right, I, right now. In, Seven. in North Point and Culpepper, there's yeah. a $700,000? North Ridge. North Ridge. North Ridge. North Point is 29 North. North Point is 29 North. That's right. Yeah. So it's... Uh, North set. Point is Almore County, close to the Greene County line. Exactly right. North Ridge is Rep in the Pep, Culpepper, Virginia. Seven, not, uh, 722000 I'd studio camera right there, J-Dubs. $1,000. Um... Yeah, so uh, pending release, quick move-in, 
you know, it's it's. Uh, I, I don't have my thumb quite quite on the Culpeper market. I'm sure uh, Scott does. Oh, certainly does. But uh, Woody Fincham says Scott um, Scott's marketing with days and confused memes is awesome. <laughs> Woody Fincham giving Scotty Mo some props over here. Thank you. I want to. I'm going to see if I can get a Lebowski thing uh, going. Well, you, here you, you're, you're kind of doing it. Right? Uh, all you need is the White Russian. Well, I was told I had. I was, I was told I had Angry Elf energy a couple from the show a couple weeks ago. Uh, so that angry was, Elf. That's about energy. a month and a half ago. That was only one okay. show. Okay, I so think I'm, you've so eradicated I'm, that. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Bring, you're going the I'm other direction. To bring a little more. Zen. Yeah. You want to go <laughs> Zen? Yeah. He's going. He's very Zen today. Um, so so while while well. Well, Scott is looking at that thing. Back to the, the, the buyer profile, I'm looking at NAR's numbers here. So 43%, um, and this is actually, this is a 22 report, which is actually 21 numbers. 43% uh, of the sales were millennials. 18% um, were between 23 and 31, and 25% between 32 and 45. I'll tell you, when I get this report March of next year, I bet you you're going to see that 43 crossing the 50% threshold awfully close to it anyway no doubt why do you think that uh, I, you know the 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 the, 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 buy, the millennial buyer is is in the market and the pool is so large like we talked about before with woody and, and nikki on the show you know the, the we we used to be at the 16 foot depth of the 10 meter high olympic diving pool right now we're maybe at the 14 foot maybe 13 foot but that pool is so huge and there's so many buyers within that that uh, can acquire, right? Because they've got the cash down payment, they've got the job, they, they can afford the payments. They're gonna they're gonna date the rate, right? And marry the house, and then come back to Scott and go ahead and and refinance after. Date two. the rate, marry the house. Usually fire Scott Morris up over there. I know. I'm, I was. I, I did that on purpose. You did that to, to try to throw some I, fuel I just in the fire. To, I'm trying to see if see if I can get him to. To kick in on I, it. I think right now he's studying uh, he's thinking. the Northridge so, uh, listings. So, I mean, they, the whole date the rate thing. Um, so let's come up with a different term. What, what would you say other than date the rate and marry the house? Because this is a real conversation we're having with buyers, right? That, that look, you know, it may be 7% and maybe going to 8%, but... You know, and I agree with you. Sometime well, next year, uh, if we've been watching the U.S. tenure over the last three days, um, we have seen uh, uh, at least a week's worth of uh, negative movement turned around. Now, I don't know if this is uh, uh, an okie doke in the bond market, and that's what I'm worried they about. Think that there is. Uh, they're trapping some retail investors before we get a little uh, uh, so for little the people back some, some jobs reports coming. So the up. people who are watching and listening here, <clears throat> please, please talk about the connection between the bond rate and and the mortgage thirty year mortgage rate because okay. there's a direct connection so, there. So so for everybody, like when when the Fed starts talking about moving the prime rate up. Uh, and and you see, uh, I see a lot of sometimes realtors posting uh, rates. Not just are realtors. Going, rates are going up. Uh, not just not just realtors. I'm but, seeing some LOs do that. Well, not you, not you. Yeah, but all right. So there, those things uh, correlate a little bit. Um, but the Fed's going to keep raising the prime rate at some point. Uh, it's going to start signaling the there's other mechanics uh, in the jobs reports that we see uh, the fact that we're already we're going to run what a third quarter of negative GDP two makes a recession you're not in a recession yet but you might there might be a severe one coming but we don't know maybe it'll be a soft landing like whatever language they want to uh, put around that um, ultimately when the bond market is bought back into so when people don't want to buy bonds high yields high mortgage rates um, when people want to buy more bonds lower yields lower mortgage rates so the, the fed could keep jacking up they could get to uh four and three quarters 4.75 as uh, a, a prime rate uh and then during that or prior to them even getting to their peak uh, we the, these recession fears could become recession realities, and when that happens, institutional money will move back into bonds, 
with that will create lower yields, which will create lower mortgage rates. Yep, and that's your prediction. And that, yeah. So, but you know, Lee Alberson loves the predictions on I, LinkedIn. I love, I love, you know, being saying these things. But the, well, I, can tell I, you. I don't, I couldn't tell you when. But the advice that I can give to my borrowers is this, and always this: if you can be comfortable at this payment, whether you whether we like where we are or not is not the point. If you can be comfortable executing this. I can guarantee you that in the next 12 to 24 months, you're going to refinance this loan. So if you can be comfortable here, know that we've got a much better something coming down the road. I just don't know how steeply things will collapse, and I don't know when it's going to happen. I just know that it's going to. Um, i got to jump in here. Um, we got great comments coming in the feed. Um, Neil Williamson is sharing uh, a meme on my personal Facebook page, which I'm going to share with Scott Morris on air. Um, here's uh, Neil Williamson's meme. Call me an elf one more time. I like it. This is from the movie Elf right here. I'll put it on screen. Judith, you can come uh, a close up on me. Travis Hackworth is watching in Danville. And Travis says, Scott Morris, I think you're all, it looks like you're auditioning for the show Logmire. Uh, which is a fantastic show. Oh, yeah. Longmire? Yeah. I'm trying to bring California hippie energy, and you're telling me that I'm bringing, like, no, you look West good. Montana, like... This look, man's all, giving that you, me, all that means This man's is, giving you some props. All that Jennifer means is, is saying to Scott Morris, I absolutely love the sweater, Scott. Please <laughs> let us know where you're getting it. And then on another page from Stephen, please have Scott stand up one more time so we can admire the sweater again. Okay. You are getting props on right. the show. Right. Can you we can, highlight we can, the sweater? We can, we can definitely highlight the sweater. How about a um, 360 turn there? I, Look at that. I, I, I can see you can go either way, right? That could be a Lebowski or that could be, you know, like that a could be, Yellowstone kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. That could be Lebowski or like uh, Montana multimillionaire. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We, yeah. I, we just need to get you one of those steps. A couple, you know, we just get, Couple million dollars. And Very then, interesting. Know, <laughs> Scott Morris is a gentleman <laughs> farmer in Culpeper and one of the top producing loan officers well, in Ross Mortgage. Let's just call him a farmer. Okay. A gentleman. <laughs> I mean, look at that sweater. He's a gentleman farmer. Uh, we can't, keeps we can't let it get that far away. So, look, to your point about recessions, right? So, um, you know, I, I personally think we're in a recession. I think we've been in a recession. I think at some point here in the first quarter of next year, somebody's going to actually say we're in a recession. But uh, you know, I'm looking at. Not it. They won't say it uh, between now and the midterms. Yeah, until after midterms. Well, mid that's midterms a couple of weeks. I'm talking sometime All by right. the end of the first quarter of next year. Let's let's talk about. I want. I really want to talk about the U.S. tenure. Um, okay. And if there is a chart that could be brought up on screen, we we spiked to. <laughs> Shane Dillon is giving you some props. Shane Dillon. How are you, my friend? Do you know Shane Dillon? I've known Shane Dillon since we was little kids. Shane Dillon says Scott Morris looking sharp. Terror looking like uh, he's off season Santa Claus, just getting back to the North Pole after a couple of be a couple of weeks in the Outer Banks. I like it. I like it for Shane so Dillon. We're, so we're Lebowski. I think he needs we're more. Yelp, and now we're, we're more Santa Claus. I should have done a better job defining the look. That's for sure. Dude, I think you're flossing. Um, you know what? All that says is you can do it. You can do everything. So and pull it off. So the it's U.S. Awesome. tenure, we actually saw um, hit four and a, up near four and a half percent. I I, th I feel like we got a little higher there, um, but we definitely were up to to four two. Um, and that might have been in some weekend trading that I saw it up near four and a half. But uh, we're we're almost down to four percent. Um, we're about to drop another ten basis points just this morning. And so, so how does that impact the thirty impact the thirty year mortgage? So that positively impacts the thirty year mortgage. So, uh, so you want the yield to, to do what in order to impact that? Yield. We want the yield to go down. That's exactly so right. when we. Um, when we quickly moved from, so look at the U.S. tenure at the beginning of the year was. Uh, yeah, I'll bring up. Uh, so while while you're searching that, um, just to go back to the, you know, typically when recessions happen, thirty-year mortgage rates drop. So in 1980, which which was a recessionary period, it dropped negative uh, four 
81 dropped another 5. 91 recession, it dropped 2.5. 2001, it dropped 0.63, so not quite a point. 2008, it dropped 1.3, 1 1.13, so just a little over a point. And the 2020 recession, it dropped, it dropped a point. So the, so the, I think that the point that we're making here is, is as the recession comes in, I think these interest rates are going to drop. I think we're closer to a 91 recession, personally. That's what I think we're about ready to get into, and which was about an 18-month recession, something, something like that, if I remember it correctly, on that end of it. So if, you're, if we get a two to two and a half point drop, and you're at seven, that makes a difference, right? Yeah. Um, huge difference. A huge difference. And, and what's the magic number for refinance? Two right? points. Too to, much? To ref yeah, way too much. Point uh, and a quarter? Uh, I mean, if you can drop three quarters, if you can drop three quarters of a point, um, so from if you were at, uh, you know, uh, call it seven to six and a quarter. Let's yeah. Let's say let's say you were at six and a half, and you could go to five point seven five. That's going to save you a pile of money. How long now, do you have to stay in the home to make up the closing costs? That's the question I was going to ask. Um, that depends on how much it lowers your payment. So the the wider the spread, the I typically, recovery. Typ yeah. Typically two years. Typically two years yeah. is my like you shouldn't you shouldn't be doing it at uh, let's say all right let's say you wanted to do a cash out and to solve some some financial problems. Let's talk about this all quickly for a second in, in a way that I think really needs to be addressed. When rates begin to drop, you are going to get, you the borrower or homeowner, is going to be bombarded oh, yeah. with uh, email. It will start out as email, then paper content. Uh, you'll see the ads that are running on uh, your your news channel of choice uh, uh, with with different companies. You're going to get uh, hammered with advertisements. Yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Call whoever originally helped you, or if you don't remember who that is, call me. I'm easy to find because the beginning may not be the best time to pull the trigger on this. Like, with what we're seeing today, uh, so what I was talking about, the U.S. tenure started the year at 1.6. It made it up to 4.5. That is almost three full percent you know, interest you know, points. points. Uh, that, that's unheard of. That is bonkers uh, from a start to finish in, in, in one year. Now, when it comes down, it's going to come down in tiers also. Um, the first round may not be the time to pull the, pig the trigger on your refi unless you have to have the money. And there's, there's all, you know, unless you have some very personal uh, urgency requirements behind it, when you first originally begin to be bombarded with all this, wait. The long... If you can wait until we get to a lower amount, you're going to save more money because you're going to pay closing costs over and over again trying to... You don't want to do it twice. Yeah, you don't want to do it yeah. twice. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I honestly think that you're going to be looking between a point and a point and two points probably within the next 12 to 24 months down. But everybody, I think the point you're trying to make is everybody needs to make their own personal decision on their personal finances they need to reach out to a trusted advisor to help them that to help them navigate that but you know at at the end of the day you know what i am seeing right now in discussions i'm having with buyers is that they're less they're okay with the interest rate because they honestly believe the rate's going to come down right so that and they're going to say look you know all i'm doing is paying interest for the first two years anyway right i'm not impacting my principal too much let's put a little bit of money aside Right. And the onus needs to be set on, um, I, I can't remember, I talked to uh, somebody yesterday uh, who's having conversations with buyers uh, saying uh, t and telling them, now may not be the time for you. 
like uh, especially kind of the conversations with some investors. You know, one, if you're from an investor, if, if you're, you're not doing this in cash, you really got to look at your cash flow right now. Like, you know, unless you, unless this is just like the ideal property and you know that you're going to refi it, even though it's not making, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make, since on paper yet but you you've got an obsession with the property like you know i'll you know i do i make emotional based purchases also i will help you execute this with the plan and the you know on where you're going to be once we can refi you down the road let's pivot a little bit sure uh, let's talk about rate locks scott Right. This is becoming um, a situation in some transactions that I'm helping some folks with, right? So that the, 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 the rate, you know, a year ago, nobody really cared about rate locks, right? Because it was, it was down, it was stable, it was whatever. So when rates were falling, people cared about rate locks. And here's it. And when that, the rates were falling. When rates were going down, sure. Because then the danger for them it was locking in a rate that was all that do, was going to tumble. Do we? Yeah. Do we lock too early? Uh, and here's right. the thing: it's, it's also it's like, okay, are you are you comfortable right now? I mean, we're inside of 30 days. Things might get better, but you're also the risking, you know, the things getting worse. Um, and then having a conversation to make them feel whole that like okay um let's do this now and i'll ignore the white noise and what's happening off here on the side to your point now it is do we want to do a, a lock and shop but now i've we're trapped because we can only go down so much sure. but if we're protected from things going up I think in today's environment, I just don't see the lock and shop or uh, doing a six month or a year long lock based off of, for like a new construction sure. situation. Well, that's a whole different animal. But, but they're similar. Yeah. The reason I brought it up is we have some sellers that we have contracts on that they're trying to shorten the closing period because their rates are expiring, right? So, um, you know, we're on the listing side on these transactions. So, you know, they're, they're, um, they're, ru they're, they're now upping the tempo of the close because their um, rates are supposedly expiring before that happens. And my advice to them was to, for their, to the agent on the other side, for them to go back to their loan officer and find out, because maybe you can help me out a little bit here. You know, sometimes there's like an automatic extension. There's like a little bit of time that you are given free or does that So there's a cost. Um, okay. There's, uh, you're, no, I could, me or anybody, I say anybody, I assume that most uh, retail LOs um, have, do this. have the opportunity to pick up a day at no charge. If you're going... Yeah, these are weeks. If we're going weeks, weeks, you're paying... Well, a, there's a cost, though, because now there's a problem for my seller, right? Right? So we had a closing date of X. Now mm -hmm. they want to move it up for two weeks, which is putting a, a fin fiscal impact on my seller. Yeah. Right? And, you know, my answer it's to them was, is we don't... Hundreds of dollars, not, we're not talking thousands of dollars, but there's definitely a hundreds of dollars penalty. Oh, and I don't, I don't know the loan amount. It, you know, yeah. that, that could... But for my seller, it's substantially more than that because they're trying to, they got to now move out of their home two weeks earlier, depending on where the domino sets up and all that stuff. And I, it's just, this was, this was on the seller side, a conversation we did not have in the last two years. Now it's starting to have, people are trying to push... That they're getting a contract in with a 45-day close date, for instance, right? And now they're trying to up it to like 30 days or three weeks or something like that because of the rates are expiring. And I just just wanted to see if you're hearing any of that or seeing. This may just be a couple of transactions that we're in the middle of. So I'm confused. I'm confused. At they want to shorten the because their rate lock will expire before closing. Uh, I, All right. I, 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 I know the look there's on your face, but that's what's happening. There's a little bit for me to unpack here. Why the contract 
that was originally sent over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody agreed to. Everybody agreed to. Correct. And now we're having a conversation. But their rate is going to expire prior to the... So we've got either someone who's not telling the truth um, or... They got a rate lock before they... Before they or they did like maybe a lock and shop and yeah. but then the, but then we go back to why did everybody knew what was going on when yeah, they well, received the contract this is actually happening live I, this happened these two deals happened yesterday so I'm trying to unpack them with the other side and what's so, going on I just thought I'd ask you what does does that make any sense to you I think they need another loan officer and I can close your loan <laughs> in the next uh, yeah. if I if I've there got go. if I've got less than 21 days I'll get it done yeah. um, so if you out there are uh, are listening witnessing this yeah. um, I've, that, I've all, already I've already made that all of this suggestion. doesn't make any sense yeah. um, from from your LO side like there's a competency thing that should have been addressed day one um but anyway in this particular case is it just it, all of a sudden rate lock became an issue and they're trying to close sooner again i haven't unpacked it yet and i just thought i'd throw yeah that out, i out think I, something sarah buchensky has got a similar question why did the buyer sign a contract with closing after rate lock expired Bingo. Yeah, agree, like agree, sarah agree. yeah i'm sarah we, we have some unpacking to do i was just curious all, if you're hearing all on the same this. page like i know mike would have uh, explained to everyone involved that uh, hey guys uh your rate lock expires uh, is there any way that you can close this on x date um i, I just i think yeah these are and i won't use names because I, I, you know it's to, but it's you're the, a nice man big these, shout out mike these are coach uh, b these are local. Love. I know. These are local loan officers. So I mean, I'll get to the bottom of it. We'll figure okay. it out. We're not going to up the. We're not going to up the closing. She also adds on the seller side, they have no obligation to close yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I just said. We're not going to. We're not going to up it. You know, but we may up it. I mean, you, when when you we may up it if there's some financial gain out of it. And that, that may happen. When you bring you know stuff like that, that's 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 where angry elf energy kicks in. <laughs> okay, I'm so like, no, no. Let's, like, stay, let's stay on the bus. Let's stay zen. Let's stay zen. zen. Let's stay zen. I can, I can tell you right now, we got professionals let's start, not Take another sip of that things. white Russian. Okay. <laughs> let's let's right. go. Uh, this is actually a latte <laughs> from Seville Coffee, for those that are wondering. Uh, Big shout out. Uh, yeah, but... but but you're 100 percent right. So this may be a negotiation opportunity for my seller. So I'm just curious if anybody's seeing that popping up. I have. This is the first time I've experienced. It. Um, yeah, I would say that is a yeah. that's an odd one, yeah. Mr. Uh, Grant. Um, so this question's come in. A um, good one from Spencer. Keith has oft, often said on this show what Scott does is a leading indicator because he's seeing applications come in before closings. <laughs> Keith seems like a good time for you to ask Scott that question. You know what? Scott's how about I ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> um, so how are we looking as far as leading indicators, right? Because you guys are you guys are uh, the front running of this. We Thank are. you, sir, for the reminder. Um, uh, you would say the first indicator, right? I would say the first indicator, especially in a well, market like this. What would be first? The, yeah, I think the first indicator is us, right? Because we start getting the, the phone conversation. Call. We have the conversation, and then you say, "Go get a pre-approval." And that's the reason I kicked the show off with asking about pre-approvals and stuff like that. These are even more important now. That they're important. Period. I mean, whoever what what real estate agents are watching. I'm pretty sure none of us would take out a buyer to look at homes without a pre-qual letter. So, um, so well, pre-qual or pre-approval? Pre well, right. well, some sort of pre-qual or pre-approval, okay. right? Uh, personally, I like... You like approvals. I like approvals. Scotty Moe, right. your mortgage advisor, would say this. Um, and this is something that uh, when I talk to uh, newer agents I coach to, uh, if we're talking about you've got... You've made the first contact. You've built a little bit of rapport over the phone, um, and you can get them to commit verbally to, "Hey, we're going to go see. We're going to go see one property. We'll schedule one property for one day, uh, and and we'll get out there, build that." And this is especially true depending on your lead source. Like if it's coming from uh, a paid lead service, if I see no problem with agents going out meeting someone getting a second level of rapport so where so where you're showing them getting them to sign a buyer uh, contract uh, to where you're their person and once they've made that commitment to you being their person you let them know all right now I need you to reach out to Scott Morse and get with him on getting a pre-approval in place and then from there 
we'll go out and look at more properties. I see no problem at all, especially turning a, a cold, warm-ish lead into a warm, hot lead by seeing one property, building that relationship, and then doing the handoff to the LO. Uh, I think there is some, there's some opportunity lost when you're saying, no, uh, I really need you to get pre-approved before we go see anything. Here's my list, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I think there's opportunity lost in not getting out there, meeting them face-to-face, -face, creating, you know, maybe even not see a property, get them in the office, cup of coffee, whatever it is you do that you're most comfortable with um, to build that next level of success. So I didn't know we were going to talk about this today, but I just happened to grab the full 150 pages of the National Association uh, data on, gen you know, on trends for purchasers and, and, and buyers. And, you know, one of the things I love about the National Association of Realtors is, um, and I think I actually said that right. You uh, said that very right. <laughs> um, well done. Um, and I didn't even have any coffee today. Um, the, uh, is the statistical data is just off the charts and they have the ability to take the deep dives into it. But to your point, um, of all buyers, in tw and this is 2022, which was 2021 numbers, 87% of all buyers use the real estate agent. So it starts with us first on that end of it. Interesting though, the age group between 23 to 21 was the highest group that, so these are the younger millennials, 92% of them um, use the real estate agent on that, on that end of it. The lowest, believe it or not, is, well, I'm not quite there yet. The 67 to 75 was 85%. So the older uh, 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 boomers, um, it was the lowest, the lowest number. Thought that was an interesting I think that's fascinating. Well, um, this is a question that's come in for Scott. Um, how high does he anticipate the rates are gonna go by the end of the year? Well, you get you that go. question constantly. I mean, I've been uh, consistently wrong in answering it. <laughs> uh, Why stop now? So, by the end of the year, all right, so we got, we're going to get through midterms. Um, we're already seeing a collapsing uh, U.S. 10-year. How strong is that collapse? Um, is there data that we don't know about inflation and jobs reports that are coming? Uh, is it, uh, do, the, do the bond buyers, does the big institutional money believe that they are in fact oversold? Um, <clears throat> so what does uh, continued foreign policy, uh, how, how does that affect? So China can't sell off their American bond holdings without it negatively affecting the yuan. Um, so, but however, the strength of the U.S. dollar right now, in part to you know uh, the bond market, um, is collapsing uh, other you know you know lower tiered economies right now. So there's some huge risk in that. Uh, the government is beginning to kind of monitor, but they're not the ones that are creating this, this shift. Um, we really need to see what inflation, inflation, inflation and these jobless claims are gonna do. I mean, well, this is a, this you is think a we hit eight, you think we hit eight? I think we hit eight if we run uh, back to back uh, November, December, uh, if we can't, if we don't see jobless claims increasing and we see inflation, uh, hot, hot, so uh, back to back we months, get, we, we get to eight. I had a conversation this morning when I was walking with my next door neighbor, you know, asked the same question. So how's the market? What's going on? You know, these are, these are questions we all get asked all the time. Um, I got that question at, uh, picking up a case of beer. Yeah, it's, it's literally. I'm it, like, it, well, I just I'm just a talk show host. Well, you talk little, to Keith and Scott yeah, over here. Yeah, a little more than that, but but the reality of it is, um, there's get asked all the time. And back to the Lisa Sturevant quote, the reason people are asking that it's the second largest uh, GDP in the state of Virginia, and it's everywhere, and it's everywhere, and, and you know it's one of the top three, right? Food, clothing, and shelter. On so, that end, of Forbes just released released an article um, on. Uh, is this housing crash, now this housing crash is an air quote crash, um, 
because it's not. It's more like uh, it's it's a it's a slowing. Uh, but nationwide, it's it's felt it's going to be felt in more pockets than others. Uh, but however, this slowing is part of what precipitates uh, a recession. So this is another cog in that wheel of all the things GDP being down, uh, a slowing in the housing market, uh, much more like say a 1981. Um, pre-recession warning than uh, uh, than 91 in that sense because 91 was uh, had a lot to do with the, the tech stock bust. that's exactly what it happened to, happened to it. so it's interesting though I'm referring to this as and I came I'm up sorry, with this 91 is not that that was not that was the war that was the war yeah. uh, that was like 2001 uh, was the slowing <laughs> so uh, I'm refer I'm not I'm referring to the market more like the bubble wrap right so there'll be certain little pockets that pop, right? Very laser-focused type of uh, Agreed. product and homes and locations that, that may pop. They, they may be over over um, valued, oversold on all that end of it. So that's kind of what I see what's happening. It's not going to be the like it was in 2007, seven eight. this whole balloon just rupturing and impacting everything across the board. Uh, so you're going to see some of the small stuff. But I think the thing I'm following is unemployment because that's the one thing. That's it. That's the one item that's really not has not kicked up yet, for lack of a better term. Right. We've got inflation. As far as I'm concerned, we're in a recession. You know, the GDP is down, yada, yada, yada uh, on that end of it. But but the 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 mass. Um, you know what I want to hit on? That's not a closing remark thing. I'm sorry, am I if I'm no, 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 you go off go on go that? I'm, 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 I'm following you, sir. I don't want to hear when uh, during uh, Scott's harassment calls to realtors about <laughs> like, how slow things are, like and how oh. and like, dude. I talked to a friend of mine, uh, also an agent, but he uh, very involved uh, with his kids' sports and. Uh, uh, coaching and like it's a huge part of it of his world uh, Buzinski also coach oh so Jake McNamara shout out love you um, I'm seeing uh, your brother JJ today we're gonna we're gonna work on some stuff uh, but my point is the kids he's been coaching have gone through uh, a tough run of uh, tournament outcomes just getting getting that little fanny spanked uh, and this past weekend, uh, they went tournament Pennsylvania, uh, you know, and and played some difficult teams, and they won, and they won in uh, competitive ways, and in, in in times that you know situations had to be tough. And when you get with a kids <coughs> group that age. Uh, and you see it even at a, a college level and a professional level. Uh, once you start seeing shoulders slumped and eye rolls and meetings, it's the body language. And once once you've committed your reaction, uh, it it shifts your mood and it your 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 body language and your mood are are big drivers of performance. Uh, a lot of a lot of us during uh, the the old, during Zoomy Zoom time and the the COVID, like getting dressed in your pajamas and not leaving your house, as opposed to like you know getting yourself fixed up, dressed sharp, and and ready to go out and and, and crush the day, brings two different attitudes. So when I'm having calls with people, and and the mood is this this woe is me like. That is not going to make your situation better. I, I can tell you I'm having opposite conversations. Um, we're as busy as we've ever been. Certain agents that I'm talking to, they're off the charts busy. I'm actually texting Greg Slater I right now. I agree with that. On, uh, you know, he was telling me he just had the best month he's ever, ever had. And certain agents not. Um, and it's interesting. I'm digging, as you're talking, I'm digging through these, these stats. And one of the questions was, and this is just a just a, a, a note out for real estate agents, how many times buyer recommended their agent? Would you believe none was 36%? 36% of the people polled would not recommend their agent. So why is that? 
right? That's the same as the LO, you know, and that number actually uh, goes up. Um, and when... No, I, I apologize. No, no, no. I, I misspoke. How many times the buyer recommended the agent? So this was, you know, to none who? was 36%. To who? Oh, it's I have to dig into it a little bit more. But basically, what they're, saying, the what they're saying, what they're what they're saying here is, um, people recommend Keith and Yona. All okay, they recommend Yona. People recommend Keith all and Yona all the time. Yeah. People recommend that because we develop the relationships <laughs> and we kind of move on. But it was interesting. And the other the other stat in here, which I, I have to pull out, um, there was a question asked: Can you name your real estate agent? And so many like there's a huge number that couldn't name their real estate agent. That helped them because we tend to be really bad at staying in connections. Follow up, follow, follow so that, that was, up. That's follow what up I was trying stuff. to figure out with what, when, when, how long. It's generally, after? it's generally follow. This was last year, so it was okay. a, transactions that happened in 2021. Uh, but, but I guess I'm trying to wrap around your conversation about your realtors and me flipping through some stats as you're talking here. That you know we, you know we tend to do a bad job of staying in front of our. Our clientele, our referrals, Yona and I do, I think, do a great job of it. Um, anybody who's in our sphere of influence, they get letters and stuff all the time in, in the mail. Um, but I thought that was an odd number. You know? So my point is in, for, for, those, for those who are feeling slump-shouldered and bad attitude towards what may, you know, if you feel things are slowing... How many of have you gone through your database yeah. and called everyone and reignited that 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 relationship? Because if you haven't, that should have been going on all along. Sure, but, but if, but if, if you're right. feeling if you're feeling that you are slower than you should be, what daily activities are you taking to make yourself more successful and and go back in and ask for those referrals? Create that energy. Yeah. Like I'm saying, don't you know. Ain't no sitting in pajamas to start your day off. Take a shower, well, get sharp, go some after Some of the, the agents attack. that came on in the last couple of years, you know, it was maybe just a little bit too easy, right? But you have to go back to it. But we, we Yona and I coach and mentor a bunch of real estate agents. And have you seen licenses to not get renewed? A little too, to little too early for that, right? Uh, that's a little too early to start seeing that. When does that happen? So licenses are one thing because we all license at different times. Well, how about a uh, car membership? That's it. That's the thing. Yeah. And I just I can report from the board last month we were up, right? So I, I think you're not going to see that. But that's a that's a trailing indicator. That's so a trailing indicator, right? But I so I don't exactly to your point. I don't think you'll start seeing that shifting. Oh, shifting, probably into the tail end of of um, next year because what happens at, at NAR and CAR and all that stuff. I, my dues are due October 31st. How much are dues? Uh, I can't remember. Someone from NAR in a very recent article, Enough. and it may be yeah. that Forbes sure. article that I'm specifically referring to, um, mentioned a... Uh, a Neil pull, just shared the Forbes article. A pullback in licensing. Uh, like yeah, so that's at the state level, right? So you got to get level. So, I mean, the tracking would be basically this time next year. You know when the dues are due at car, right? So which is the 31st of October, uh, and of course, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith always wait to the last minute to pay 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 anything. But um, so the point is, is people will be paying this year. I don't think you'll see an impact until do people now drop out between now and October of next year because of the market. And logic will tell you that's probably going to happen a little bit. Uh, you know, I, uh, today was my last board meeting. I can tell you um, 2023, 2024 budgets for Charlottesville Association of Realtors, Area Association of Realtors, whatever it is, whatever car, there you go. Um, it's going to be a tough job. Whoever's taking on treasurer, that's going to be a tough, tough budget. Why do you say that? Well, I, I think because of what we're talking about. I think you're going to start seeing, I mean, we're, we're looking, right? We're at a 20 almost 20% year-over-year year reduction in volume. That's going to impact across the board. Not dollar amount. Not, you know, this is just transaction volume. Yeah. You know, the, deal's the, done. Deal's done. The, the, I think across the board you're going to see appreciation go up. It's two very different things. Sure. But, you know, if there is 20% reduction in deals, that means somebody's not making... Somebody's doing twenty percent less business, so it's gonna it's gonna come from somewhere. Well, interestingly, and it's it's uh, it's got it's a market with many faces. Like for example, one face, the agent Keith and Yona is a good example. The agents that are able to keep their volume 
at basically the same clip could make more money because the deals exactly are at a right. more exactly expensive right. price point. But the agents that are doing less volume are going to be making less money because they're just not clocking enough work right here. Well, I'll you be could honest be with, making more commission money here. I, I'll be honest with you. We set our budgets for next year already, and our mm. transaction volume is less, but our our revenue You're, volume is more we're projecting higher. Yeah. yeah. Because the deals are at a higher clip. That's correct. Yeah. Also, if you're an agent who is already l lower and you're concerned about that falling, if you're not doing that much volume right now, call me and we can set up a plan where we can turn the level that you're at being the lowest level that you, are, you have to deal with for the rest of your life if you're willing to take action and do the work. So something I've been talking about with the team and planning for, for next year uh, is intent implementation. So um, doing things that you are focused that on this is gonna create a better outcome and then doing it. So, so um, you're 100% right. This is when the basics matter. I, I put the number away, but I believe it was 36%. That's a place to start to work. Work with your clients. I don't care if it's one or 100 or 10 or whatever's in your sphere of influence. That person better refer you. That person better not be part of that 36% They should refer you. And that is, now's the time. It's, this is a contact sport. It's always been a contact sport. The last two years has kind of made it hard to do that. But this is a contact sport. Stay in contact with your sphere of influences, your trusted advisors. Right. These are the people that are going to help grow your business. And, you know, that's what we've been doing for 35 years. It's not rocket science. Right. And um, but, you know, to your point, and, and I can't remember the exact number and Neil will correct me. But, you know, I think it's like 20 percent of all the real estate. 90 percent of the business, like 90 percent. And I may have the numbers wrong, but it's a huge percentage difference. Those 20 percent, they know how to do it and they're going to keep on doing it. It's the other rest of them that need to kind of start, start you know, that, the fact that 36% of the people won't recommend their real estate agent is a problem. Coach B says you're, you've morphed into the big Lebowski. Who's that? <laughs> Coach B. Okay, okay. That's what you wanted? Uh, what's that? That's what you wanted? Yeah. You know? The big Lebowski? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dude. He says yeah. he sees it. Yeah, 100%. He sees the dude. I couldn't get past Santa Claus, but that's okay. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the Halloween uh, motif. I uh, am Coach B, Michael Buchetsky. So I am actually uh, an, or an ordained minister. I don't know if you guys knew this. <laughs> I did not um, know that. In the, uh, the Latter-day Church sorry. of the Dude. Oh, this is a real thing. I can, so if you want, you know, you want me to throw the sweater on, um, So you can actually do marriages and stuff? Yeah, like? yeah throw, mix up a little white Russian. I'm, I'm happy to uh, yeah. be the, the master of ceremonies uh, at your... Uh, uh, well, we're, we're going to, Yona and I renewed our vows three times. We're going to renew Ooh. them again for a fourth time. Um, we'll hire the dude to renew our vows. We might have to fly you somewhere. He also says you've been totally right with your takes um, today. Coach B has. Thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. some props. Um, how many times have you renewed, renewed your vows? Three times. Wow. Well, renewed our vows twice. It was the original and, and twice. Romance is in the air in the Smith house. Uh, you know, Yona had an opportunity three times to say no, so I don't want to hear nothing. Hey, it was a one-way <laughs> ticket to Europe. She came back, though. She came back, yeah. yeah, yeah. Her, luggage back. Did, her luggage did not, though, by the way. Oh, where's the luggage? Somewhere over the Atlantic? We are, uh, I, we're actually texting. TBD? TBD? We're, we're, we're to be determined. No, it's in the United States. We know that much. Just can't tell you where. Nicholas Erpe giving you guys some props. Um, this is coming in the feed from Thomas. Yet another humorous show I especially liked when uh, Scott was modeling the sweater. And Michael Buczewski says, you're, you're awesome at this. You're awesome, man. So you're getting props, dude. The uh, viewers and listeners are giving you props, Thank my you. friend. I appreciate that. The yeah. band is back together. The band's and we're on a mission from God. Yeah. So Friday, it's, it's Jerry and I. Blues Brothers. It. Blues Brothers, there you go. I got thanks, it. Thanks for paying attention. I got it. So you said it earlier. <laughs> for the audience. Yeah. You know. You said I, don't, it earlier. I, don't, I said it earlier. I don't really want you guys thinking I was just dabbling it, it out there to see, okay. see who There's was. Like, to see if he was paying attention. Anyways. No, actually, Smith forgot. <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, we, so, got, uh, we got one host with the voice of a phone sex worker. We got one host who might have a smidge of dementia. And we got one host whose moonlighting is the big Lebowski over here. 
And of course, there's. Well, I, pre uh, I prefer ADD, oh, not, ADD. To mention, okay. not to mention. ADD. I prefer. That. And then we got Judah Wickhauer, who's our rock. As our rock. And, and he hasn't laughed all too much today. Oh, he's been I laughing. I haven't, I haven't been able to watch him. So Friday, it's, it's Batman and Robin. Looking forward to it. Um, and then the actual Batman and Robin. We'll be here on the 31st. A it's week Monday. from today. A week from today. Okay, see, so well, I no, dressed up today. Monday is the 31st. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys unless have the calendar's a... lying to me. A week from Monday. A week from Monday. Excuse Monday me. A week from Monday. Yeah. So am I, am I wearing the Robin costume on Monday? Well, you're not wearing anything. Actually, Robin will be here. That's even. Oh, I don't know, okay. I don't know that's what a, you're talking that's a, about. That's a little scary. We're taking a vacation on the 31st. And so Batman on Monday, and um, Keith and I will not be here. But well, two here. human beings that look surprisingly a lot like us. <laughs> and sound a lot like us. And sound a lot like us. <laughs> will be here in spandex. In spandex. How's the, uh, for your friend who likes, for your Batman friend, how is his Batman costume, how is his Batman crime fighting outfit fitting these days? You know, thank you for, thank it, you for, yeah. thank you for noticing. Absolutely. I appreciate noticing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about 15 pounds lighter than I was this Ooh. time last year. So, um, it, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Maybe Batman will, will have a little room in his spandex. <laughs> last, last time when Robin was in the Isle of Seville studio, he proceeded to walk down the downtown mall in his Robin outfit. And while some folks were staring, some people gawking in horror, as he was walking into the studio, he did a fake karate chop like this in the air, and the UPS driver was coming right around the corner, and he scared the bejeebus out of the UPS driver. So maybe Robin and Batman can walk up and down the mall again. Oh, I like that. Oh, oh, well, we're but Batman and Robin better have some. Oh yes, yeah, some coffee. Some coffee. Some coffee. Coffee. Batman and Robin will have coffee. coffee. On Batman Monday. will have a very similar accent to mine. Yeah, I'm looking forward Hopefully to it. Hopefully, Robin uh, can talk normally. Yeah, uh, I actually I like it. It oh, actually, yes. it actually sounds that's real, terrifying. Very sexy. I actually I heard this yesterday afternoon. They're like, Jerry, Ooh. that's quite the voice for oh, a well, talk show right I there. Like and I was it. like, whoa, whoa. Oh. Good, because I got a face for radio. So uh, no, you got a uh, a face and a sweater for a video <laughs> cast, my friend. I do like it. I like the sweater. You have to tell me off air where you got. You got it, props right? the whole show. So thank you, and hey, brother, love you. Glad to hear love everything you. is everything is going. Yeah, going in the yeah. right direction. We love we're, Scott Morris, we're, we're guys. Ross you. Mortgage, Scott Morris, Ross Mortgage. You see what the man is all about. He's here Wednesdays on Real Talk with Keith Smith. Ross Mortgage and Scott Morris. Friday, Batman and Robin, Keith Smith and yours truly on the I Love Seville Network, presented by Yes Realty Partners. All the shows are archived online on the fabulous, the dynamic, realtalkwithkeithsmith.com. We encourage you to click the Partners tab on Real Talk with Keith Smith, where you will see the trusted supply chain for housing in Charlottesville, Almaro County, and Central Virginia. Judah Wickhauer is the director. The I Love Seville show is up in 58 minutes. We will see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Nicely done, gentlemen. Well done, Scott. Bang, bang. Good to see, good to see you back in the seat, brother. Thanks, homie. I was, uh, dude, I, so 